Hi folks, welcome back. I promise we are going to assemble today, this episode. Ready? Alright. Now, I, um, yeah, gather my thoughts. Okay, I got glue. I use Type 1 3. Listen, I'm not doing a commercial. I like it. I like it because it does have a little more open time, so you're a little, you got a little bit of flexibility there when it comes to assembling. I had a piece of furniture once that was destroyed. It was at a photographer's studio over the weekend, and a pipe broke. And as a result, everything delaminated. So you got the waterproof uh, or waterproof part of it that I like. And you don't lose anything to gain that, so I figure it's good to have. Okay, um, this has to go together in a specific sequence. So we'll put an end and a, and a side together. Then we'll put another end in, then we slide the bottom in, and then we put the final side piece on. So I want to make sure that I have a pounding block. I'm going to actually shoot that. I'm going to take a few precautions with pine that you wouldn't have to, perhaps, with hardwood. And I like to put together, put the joint together with a piece of, uh, with a block of wood because it enables the entire joint to go together at once, and you don't run the risk of it splitting. But that pine can be so soft that if the block you're using is nice and smooth, you can leave some serious dents, serious dents in the uh, work piece. So I'll just shoot the end of this real quick. It pays to have a couple, a spare one, just in case something goes wrong. Split it. Now the other thing I want to make sure is I want if I need to get actually I set my marking gauge to be less than the thickness of the tailboard so that won't come into effect. And I'll show you I'll explain to you what I mean. Just a second. Alright, clear everything out of the way that I don't need. Some light on the situation. Have one chisel close by in case I need it. Square. And my bottom, reference the right way. I put together with a uh, with a hammer, and the reason is you can read what a hammer's what what's happening with a hammer. You don't, you can't do that with a mallet. Okay. Let's. Uh, Oh yeah, and there's my spatula. That's what I use. Just a little palette knife. And it, uh, I like it because you can put glue exactly where you want it. Okay, put this one together first. This is number two. And number two. Jake, you nervous? Very. Okay. Get in here, frick, real close. I want to. I want them to see what I'm doing here. A nice even coat on all of the long grain surfaces. Don't put too much, and and don't expect the glue to automatically spread itself. Which means you can't just put a blob on there and think that it's going to somehow mysteriously coat the surface. You've got to put it where you want it. So. I make sure that I put a nice even coat on all the long grain surfaces and I even put a little bit out here in these shoulders just for fun. Okay, whoops, I need to get glue on. Alright, put this in position. Just tap it lightly. Two and two, and then get my block. this up. Okay. Uh, I've already got a situation going on there and I don't know why. Two and two. And I can't deal with it now. Deal 
close it in the end. Wipe off the excess so I can set this on my bench. Now this one I can put together going down on it from this angle. Careful over here because that's where that groove is for the lid. Okay, make sure I'm in the right orientation. The glue will actually function as a lubricant. So that's one of the reasons why I make sure I glue both surfaces. I should have something down on my bench and I don't. Being a bad example. Okay, now keep that square. Pound them with a block. I'm not putting any great amount of pressure on any part of the joint. Spreading it out evenly. Okay, let's double check these and make sure they're square. That one is, and that one is. Now we can set the bottom in place. Well, that seems a little bit long. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, it is a little bit long. Now we can fix it now. Okay. As long as these are square, they can go ahead and set up. I don't have any worries. I, because I knocked them out of square, I'm just going to reseat them. Check it one more time before I leave it alone for a minute. Okay, now let's find out what I did here. Grab my straight edge. Shy 11 and a quarter. That's a little more than 11 and a quarter. Well, I'm not sure what has happened, but I can shorten it. excited when it's together. A little bit more. I'm going to have to come in and cut a new shoulder. I'll show you how I'll do that with the marking gauge. it off of the edge which I didn't change. See what I'm doing? Yep. 
and then just check and see how much, oh yeah. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is going to be use that nice sharp arcing gauge. Now I'm doing this because I don't want to have an uneven groove as a result of having to shorten this. I don't want to go too far. I don't want the mark to show up out on there, so I'm being careful to start and end before I get to those sides. So you want a nice sharp marking gauge. in there and finish that. Is it Murphy's Law? Something's going to go wrong, it will. Yep. Proved it today. However, this wasn't a, a real big deal, but I don't know what happened. Other than the fact that I already confessed I'm a lousy at math. So I usually, instead of relying on a measurement, I actually use the piece and gauge it based on where it's going to go. Again, choke up on that chisel so that you have lots of control. And then I'll use the marking gauge to come in and redefine that shoulder. Now, since we have exposed some new wood, I'm going to come in and just put a little bit of wax on there, mostly to protect or to prevent glue from gluing that, that lid in place when it shouldn't be. That's not the wax I used. Okay, now we'll wipe that off. Get right down in that corner and get all that residue out of there. Make sure there's no debris. It's going to keep that from seeding. Okay. 
Okay, with that in place. Now I'm looking right here to make sure that I've got at least that much depth on the side, and I do. Hate to try to put this together and then find it not closed because of that. Okay. Let's wax this up. Or uh, glue this up, I should say. Don't need any more wax. Careful gluing around that bottom so that I don't, even though I waxed it, I don't want to uh, tempt fate. Keep it clean. Now this one's a little bit hairier because you've got to do both or two joints at once. Not so bad on a small box like that, but when you're trying to put together a chest of drawers or a bookcase, it sure is nice to have a second pair of hands gluing up one joint while you're doing the other. So I like this little tiny bottle too. It just Makes it a little easier to do. Okay. Now I'll get one started. And I'll come over here. Get this one in place. I got some fairly serious gaps at the end. And the first thing I'm going to try is to see if I can pull them together with a clamp. And then I'm going to try to figure out why. And I think I know why. I don't know whether they're going to be closable or not. Well, maybe they are. I didn't want to have to do this. But... I've got to save it. Watch it for it. I really don't like having to do that. Now, I guess you can never have too many clamps. I'm going to carefully pull this in. And what this does is it just pulls that outside half pin in and it'll help hold whatever gains we make in what we're doing with the clamps. Okay, that's uh, that is that this side is a little proud of the end. So in order for the clamp to work, I'm gonna have to get a little piece of wood in there. piece with an angle on it, but I don't have anything else. Now I can see a little bit of squeeze out there, so it's doing the job. If you have to do this, if you have to clamp the ends, then squeeze the joint this way, and it'll help, as I said, hold whatever gains you have there. These are awful big, cumbersome clamps. Flip this over. I'm going to have to do the same thing on this side. Yes, I am. You don't have to get that close on this one if you don't want to. I think they need to see this. You just are happy to be able to film it. we skip this episode? <laughs> no, we can't go back either. That's the 
one thing about this shooting uh, <laughs> real time. You can't go in and fix your mistakes in the privacy of your own shop. Actually, Jake, grab me a couple clamps like that. I don't like these ones that have the hollow. See if there's some over there, right over there by the hundred. That stack of pine. I just I see that hollow right there. It just leaves a ring on the wood, and I don't have anything to protect it. Are there any small ones like that that I, you just saw me using? I should have some other ones like that. There's, there's two over there where Dave was working this afternoon, right over there, where I was making the dovetail saws. Grab me a couple of those, please. Um, I haven't tried this, but someone told me that you can take a hair dryer to this if you're if using these polyvinyl acetates or aliphatic resin glues, white and yellow, you can soften that joint up. Actually, I have done that before. You can soften the joint up with a hair dryer if you have to reposition something after it's already started to set up on you. I wasn't exactly planning on introducing that as a new tool. It's a power tool. Oh, that's true. I'd have to sit there with a candle and a and a billows. This out of the way. That one I'm not so worried about. Okay, I gotta get the. Uh, in order, I wanna make sure that you understand, they understand what I'm doing here. And no, the word is not panicking. But you see how this, this piece right here is, the, and the long side is proud of the end. I can feel a little ridge right there. So if I put the clamp on, I'm not going to get the pressure where I want it. So I've got to come in with a piece of wood or something. So that I can put that exactly where it needs to be. Careful with the pine. It'll bruise so easily. Okay. Now, just hope that it's still square. It is. After all that clamping. Well, a wish and a prayer, and it might turn out. It looks good now. I don't know what went wrong. I'll try to work backwards and find out. Next thing we've got to do while that's drying is we've got to build the lid. How are we for time? Five minutes. We'll okay, we can get started on it. We're going to name this episode True Confessions. Boy, it bothers me. The amount of clamps you have, it looks like you do this quite often. Now you're <laughs> being a little smart. Okay, I'm going to move this. Hopefully it doesn't explode. All right. Now, we need to dimension the lid. And I also have to decide what we're going to do with the lid. Meaning, am I going to have it have it a flat piece? Am I going to have it raised with a rabbit all the way around? What kind of texture? I think the first thing I'll do is just square it up and that'll give buy me a little bit of time to think about it. I'm so distraught over the way that joint went together. Well, if you're gonna work wood, you've gotta learn how to make your fix your mistakes. I guess it's inevitable that they're going to happen. Doesn't matter how much experience you have or don't have. Okay, square up these ends. Take measurements off of that. That's 
exactly why I didn't uh, do anything more with this lid until the box was built so we can go in and we can fit the lid precisely. I don't want any slop at all. I want to make it as precise as I can get it. So this one we're going to cut a little bit, uh, we're going to cut short by just a couple of minutes. When we come back, which will be our final episode, we'll take the clamps off, plane that up, and uh, hopefully everything will work just perfectly. I don't want to have to show you how to fix a bad dovetail joint, but if we do, we do. And then we'll get the lid finished off. We'll put the, the uh, we've got to figure out some kind of a finger recess in order to slide that lid open. And we'll uh, put a wax finish on it and we'll be done. We'll introduce what we're going to do next. So we'll see you back here for episode number 15. 15. Final. All right. <laughs>